What's your story, Marsha Berkey? What's your story? Marsha Berkey has been teaching computer software skills in face-to-face -face and online college classes for decades. <laughs> decades, she's not that old. She thoroughly enjoys using technology creative, creatively and practically. And what's your story to tell? Documenting your story and or the story of those you love. Marsha will show you several techniques in Word and Google Docs, PowerPoint, and Google Slides and other programs to more easily document your stories. Tips, techniques, and resources will be provided. Prompts and questions to, park your, to spark your thoughts will be shared. Everyone has multiple stories to share, and we are delighted to have our very own Marsha Berkey here with us on Zoom tonight to teach us how to document our own stories. So let's give a warm stug welcome to Marsha Berkey. Marsha. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. I, I, I can't see all of you all of the time, but it's great to see you. And I'm going to can you see me? I still see Anne. Okay, well, yes. I'm, I'm not going you. to worry about that then. Uh, I'm going to switch from sharing my screen and just talking to you and also sharing some, um, some videos and some, um, some videos and some how-tos and the actual programs. So I'm going to be moving around a little bit. First of all, I want to tell you that we all have stories, just like Anne said, and we all view other people's stories. When we read a newspaper article, when we watch a movie, when we read a book, they're all somebody's stories that they're telling. And you have stories and the people that you love have stories. And, you know, I kind of wanted to add at the end of that, Capture your stories while you still can. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to do that is because my mother had uh, dementia before she passed away. She passed away a little over a year ago. And, oh, my, uh, she had it for 13 years. And as she started losing her memories, I just thought of all these things that I wanted to know about her, that I wanted to ask her, that I wanted to document, that. I hadn't done it when, when I could have. I do have a couple of um, um, quotes for you. And one is that there are very few people that we wouldn't like if we really knew their story. So you can think about that one a little bit. Here we go. Here's how you can do it. If you look at your chat and if you type the word question in it, and then down below that question on the bottom left-hand corner, there should be a T with a little pencil. And if you click on that T with a little pencil, you can highlight the word question. And right above it, there will be a toolbar. And there is an A with a blue underline on my, in my window. But you should see an A with a color underline. And if you click on that A, you can see different colors for your background color and your text color. So what I'm going to ask you to do is change your background color to orange, then click off a question and you can see what that would look like. Now, when you want to send it, you would click the little arrow in the bottom right hand corner and that would send your question. And if you can uh, format your question with a color, then Huey or whoever's manning the questions will be able to see it a lot better. If you, if you still can't get our attention, then I encourage you to just raise your hand or something else and they'll alert me and I'll stop talking and we can, we can uh, just pause and answer those questions. Okay, why do we want to document our stories? One, so that we can remember, so that we have good memories to pass on our, our insights into our lives, to, to touch hearts, to teach lessons. There's so many different reasons. 
what are some of the things that you can document? And I'm going to add more, you know, as I go through this whole thing, I'll tell you other things, but you might want to start out with keeping a good things journal. You know, what good things have happened to you? What compliments did anyone give you? Uh, did anybody send you a thank you? Um, just anything good that happened to you. Gratitude journal. You can do a morning pages. If you, if you have, uh, if you do any meditating or anything like that, you go for a walk, you think thoughts that, that are really cool on your walk, capture them when you come back. Jot it down, record it with your voice, with your words, with video, any way you can do it. And we'll talk about how to do those things in just a little bit. Save things. I, I like to save memorabilia from trips and uh, different things like that. I like to take pictures, reflect. In your walk, when you're walking, when you're writing, don't worry about your grammar. Don't worry about your, your spelling. My grandfather and my father and my brother and our son, they can't spell, they couldn't and he can't spell for anything, but they do it phonetically so that when I read their words, I know what they're trying to say. I, I've got their story. Do you think that I would trade any misspelled story or any misspelled anything that they wrote uh, for something that was spelled correctly? No. So don't, just don't let that, that bother you. I'm going to um, show you, and I think we had a class on this before, but I'm going to show you one way I do a data dump of things that, that I can write about. And I'm going to share my screen again and here and this video does not have sound to it so I'm move that over there so i'm just going to talk through it this is a mind mapping software and this particular one is called inspiration 10 there's all different kinds of mind mapping softwares i've tried many of them if you don't have this, don't worry. You can take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and do the very same thing. There are some benefits to having it digital, but I did it on paper for many, many years, and I still oftentimes take notes using mind mapping. So whatever program or pencil and paper, pen and paper that you use, you start in the middle with some central idea. And for this, we're typing in my story. Then you can fill in different categories of things that you might want to, to write about or at least document. I'm saying write, but at, at least document. Uh, you can always rearrange them. You can erase them. You can delete them. You can move them around. You can add to them. These are some main categories. <coughs> I love this because it's nonlinear, meaning that nothing has more importance than another thing. It doesn't matter where you start and where you end. You can add that. So under family, what I've done, here's a main category. And now I'm adding some subcategories. I Under family, I could do parents and siblings, my ancestors, our children and grandchildren. Under each subtitle or subcategory, you can add more subcategories. And as you can imagine, excuse me, as you can imagine, under my father, I could add a hundred different categories. What he did for his work, corny jokes he told, and his parents, you know, all those different kinds of things. So as you're doing your data dump, you can just get ideas. And then whenever you're ready to start, maybe you give yourself 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a week, 15 minutes a month, just do something. Then you can pick anything that might grab your attention at that time. And it's a great prompt for you to, to start your 
um, whatever you want to write about right then. And I think I have a few more. Oh, yes, I've, I've filled, filled them in. And let's, I'm going to pause this just so, so I can uh, talk about a few of these. For example, how many of you have a story about favorite food that one of your family members um, fixed for you when you were young? That anytime you smell that smell or you, you see that food, it brings back the story of your favorite aunt who made chocolate pie for every family get together. Or perhaps you need to document your medical story so that people coming after you might know some of the things that you have that you've gone through in your life that, so that they can see if they're hereditary or that you had hard times with medical and how you dealt with it. How did you deal with the pain that you went through? Anything like that. Ethical wills. Share what you've, what you believe in. You know, they, they may tell stories about you after you're gone. Well, you know, they always believed in whatever. You can share what you believe in. You can share, how did school go for you? What, what did you like the best? Was anything hard for you? Uh, what schools did you go to? What lessons did you learn that from school that weren't in a class? Your spiritual ver journey, um, that you've visited, vacations that you've taken, pets that you've had, or that you wished you had. We've moved over 40 times since we've been married. And that doesn't count our north-south trips each, each summer now. You can document those kinds of things. I don't have on here your jewelry. Most of my jewelry isn't fine jewelry, but it has a story to it. And you can doc, you can take a picture of that piece of jewelry and then you can document it and, and share why it's special to you, how you got it, where you got it, who gave it to you, who made it, like <laughs> earrings. <laughs> Thank you. Earrings <laughs> for Valentine's Day then. <laughs> and um, so there's just any number of things that, that you can document. And this is, this is uh, one way that you can jump that. Um, let me see. Someone asked where you can get a, a template like this. Uh, Vincana, you, this is being recorded so you can see it again. And I will be sharing a lot of prompts. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Pages and pages of prompts that you can, you can use uh, to start a story as well. And I'll talk more about those in a, in a little bit. Um, Bill, I always start my notes with a, such a comment to pro provide context, then the idea I want to explore and the questions that the idea raises, which I wish to research further. Thank you, Bill, that's great. If you just start and start writing, you'll find that your ideas come back um, much, much faster. I'm going to continue this. There may be a little bit more of this. I wasn't sure how long that was going to be on, so. And again, this one is Inspiration 10. And almost all the digital ones have a button so that once you have your mind map done, you can click on the button and it creates a linear outline for you, which you can export to your word processor. And then you can type your stories right in that word processor or, or not. You know, there are there's so many different ways. And you can toggle back and forth between this outline and, and the map. So that, that's very helpful for me as well. And we'll go forward. Okay. And I just want to show you this. This is an example of my mind map for our class tonight. So that, that's how I plan my classes. That's how I plan 
any parties, any lessons, any any anything. I use mind maps, and so they're they're really really very helpful. And I think that's all for this one. Okay, now I'm going to stop my share again. I wanted to show you another way that you could document some stories, and this is I. I have one both for my father and my mother, and they're called ABC books. And this is my mother. I've got a, a reflection in this. I'll see if it, it works. And I did it digitally so that I could share it with every family member. I didn't have to print it. I did print a few and, and had them spiral bound for them. But all you do is do your ABCs and you start with one, your A, and then you could either do a mind map or just start typing in words that remind you, remind you of that person for that letter. So my mother collected angels and I included a picture of some of the angels that she collected. They went to Arizona and they served a mission there. And I, and I got pictures from that. And then I just went through the whole, the whole alphabet, included some genealogy and all different kinds of things like that. And I did the same thing for my father. And so those, the letters of the alphabet are prompts for you. And you can just start thinking of, words that that um come to mind about that person and you don't have to start with a and do all the a's first just put in the alphabet and then as you think of a letter go to that letter and start putting in that that uh, paragraph or paragraphs or pages what whatever that that comes in i did want to show you how to insert, um, how to insert, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking on my uh, computer screen, how to insert um, pictures into your word processor, whether it be Word or Google Docs. And so I'm gonna share my screen again. You may get dizzy from me sharing my screen and not sharing my screen, but We'll close out this. I'm going to open up Word and there we go. And uh, first of all, I should have typed in some text. Well, actually, I'll show you another way. I was going to save this for later, but um, I'll show you now both in Word and Google Docs, you can do speech to text. So if you're not a good typist and you don't wanna write things out in Word, I'll go to Google Docs in a little bit and, and show you there, but in Word, and let me give you a commercial for Microsoft Office. The last I checked, and it was a month or two ago, Microsoft Office was $99 for nine devices. And that includes the whole suite of Microsoft products. And it could be five different households. They don't care. I, I made sure with them that they didn't care. So five of you want, wanted to get together, you could get that. I really like their products, but I will also show you how to do it in Google Docs. And, um, and that's per year. I'm sorry, I, I don't wanna mislead you. So. In Word, on the home ribbon, there is a dictate, and I can click on dictate and then dictate, and now it's listening, and it's going to be typing in whatever I say, as good as it can do. So if I'm telling it my story, it will type in my story for me, and I'm not having to type it. I will need to come in and edit and edit. I don't know how that's echoing. <laughs> and edit my work. 
and also add some punctuation and fix some grammar things, things like that. But that's on the home ribbon under the voice group, and it's the dictate tool. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off by clicking on the microphone. And now it's turned off. Only I turned it off before it finished that. So now I have some text. Let's say that I wanted to put in a picture to go along with this. And in Word, you go to insert pictures and you either go this device, if it's on your computer or stock images or online pictures. We'll go to online pictures. And let's say, I haven't done this. I probably should have done this before, but let me say boxer dog with white nose. And hey, we'll, we'll take this one. I had a pet when I was a child and it was a boxer and it had a white nose. And let's say I'm writing a story about this dog and I don't have a picture of him. It wasn't as easy to take pictures when I was a young person and I just don't have a picture of my pet, but I wanna write a, a story about him. First of all, so, so my point is, you can go out and get some other picture that looks pretty much like the picture that you want. And you've got it in your document. When I click on the picture, if I want to resize it, if you go from either side, it, it squashes them. He might need a little diet but it doesn't maintain the ratio. But if you come from the corner where the two headed arrow is and drag it from the corner, it will keep the width and height ratio. Or if you hold down the shift key as you drag it, it will also maintain that ratio. Now notice that the picture is at the bottom of the first line of text. It's, that's where it's aligned. And it's, it's, you know, it's hard to move. So one thing that you can do in Word, you'll double click your picture. And what that does is it opens up a picture format ribbon. This is great because you can do all kinds of things to your pictures. You can put um, soft edges, you can put frames, all kinds of things around it. But where I want to go right now is wrap text. And it's on the picture format, the arrange group, wrap text. So if I go to wrap text, and what I want is square, you can see that the text then wraps itself around the, the picture. And I can go on and keep typing. And if I want it on the other side, I just drag it to the other side. and the text will wrap. What you can do though, when you're here, when you go to wrap text, and I encourage you to do this for any tool on any ribbon or menu uh, within Google Docs, anywhere you are, check out the other options through the, it will uh, wrap around that way, top and bottom. If I move it, like that, that's top and bottom. I mostly use square is what I use. And that's what I did in this book for the, oh, you can't see it because I'm sharing my screen, but when I wrote up the ABC books, I just wrapped my text. Now let's go to Google Docs and we'll, I'll show you how to do that within Google Docs. And So we'll come to Google Docs and actually I'll, no, I, I should, I should show you the, 
the speech to text in this one as well. So in Google, Google Docs and in Google Docs, you go to tools and voice typing. And then you click on the microphone to speak. Once you do, it will listen to whatever you're saying and it will type in your text. Now I have to think of something to write. Okay, for all of you stud, let's see what it does with that. You stud officers. <laughs> but you just come back and, and, um, and edit that because you know it's a hard word to do. You might want to document who you served with. You know, what did you do? What lessons did you learn? What benefit did you have by becoming an officer? Or perhaps document what your duties were so that you could pass those along to the next officer that will so generously volunteer the next time you need a volunteer. Okay, now we turn this off with the, with the uh, microphone again. And I'll finish that sentence because it bugs me. Now we'll go to insert, insert and image and I'll do Google Photos, and this is my husband, and he <laughs> wanted to see if this e-bike at Costco, um, uh, if he dwarfed it. So he had me take his picture so he could see what it see what it looked like. Okay, now when we click on this picture in Google Docs, then we have. Um, wrap text is right up. And if I make it smaller, then you can see it too aligns to the bottom of the first sentence. But I can click here and then the text will be um, over to the right. You can have top and bottom. You can have it behind the text. So Word will do all the same things, but it's under wrap text. This is with it right here. I'm going to go back to the square. Does anyone have any questions about wrapping text around images in Word or in Word or Google Docs? And also Feel free to share in the chat uh, prompts that you use for documenting stories or uh, tips that you have with, with images. We have done many, many classes in STUG on images, on Word skills, Google Docs skills, PowerPoint skills, um, mind mapping all different kinds of things. And we're willing to do any kind of classes that you want. So if you see things that are interesting to you, share it in the chat and then the board will talk about those things and they'll find somebody who teach those classes. So I encourage you to do that. Okay, now um, I already told you about you could, um, search for different images and I, what I did today, I went to Google images. So when you go to Google, here are images. And if you click on that, it's just going to look for images. And I'm going to look for girls gym suits in 1967. So that's when I was in high school and we got to wear these lovely gym suits. And I would think that many of the women in, in our audience can relate to these one piece beauties. <laughs> and so if you wanted to talk about a story like that, again, it doesn't have to be your picture. You can go out and you can find those things. Also, if you, if you need other prompts, you can go to your Google photos and you can type in a, a a location like maybe Branson, Missouri. Okay. We, 
if you have your location on, it will bring up pictures that you've taken at that particular, lo particular location. When you see a picture, it may prompt you to write a story about it and to document that trip. For example, if you haven't been there recently, they have opened uh, an aquarium. It's all finished now, but when we went, it was still a little bit under construction. But look at this. Look at that entrance. It's this huge octopus with mosaics on it. It is just beautiful. And um, we have lots of people who do mosaics who might want to see that. And they have all these different uh, aquarium things. So you can do, uh, you can do a, a location. You can do a person. You can do anything that you wanted to do. And, and these will jog your memory. Now, I do want to share some resources with you. So I'm going to bring up. Um, Marcia, there's a couple of comments in the chat box. Great. Thank Can you I so much. Okay, one one was when's the next class for this? And I don't think we've got anything scheduled except maybe your Canva class. And and when they say this, what do they mean? So I don't know. share some specifics with us and we'll we'll try to get specific classes. Is the Microsoft Office you discuss available as an application? Yes, you can also download it. You don't have to have an internet connection. Uh huh. Christine, yes, I thought somebody would recognize those those onesies. I wanted to show uh, you a couple of different uh, resources, and I'll share web web addresses with you as well. And so this one is Fodi.com, and it has generators. And the one I have, the one I have in the web in the chat is on newspapers, but I'm going to just go to generators and it has all of these different things. And you can name your newspaper, whatever you want it to. You can put whatever date you want to, you can put whatever headline you want to, and then you can put your, your story in it. And then it generates that newspaper article. It looks like an actual newspaper. So for my granddaughter's birthday, extra, extra, read all about it. Cassandra Butler's turning nine years old. And I had her picture in the newspaper and a little story about her. Um, I've done it for different clubs I've in, I've been in and different, different things like that. But you can also do clapper boards and, and I have never done the talking flowers, um, but you, you can do, you know, just all kinds of things. So that's one place. And they're just fun ways to document your stories. For example, when I put images in PowerPoint, I'll add a text bubble, a, a thought bubble, and put a little uh, thought about um, that picture in that. This one is, is great fun. I don't know, is Sharon Rump in the audience? Can you see if she's there? Well, I used a photo funia. No, she's not. Okay. Well, well, then I can talk about her. <laughs> uh, Sharon, Sharon has been in our in our stug and previous names of our our club for many many years, and she's also in a Miceketeers computer group in our community with me. And Sharon is a beautiful woman. And so I went to magazines. And when I was demonstrating this for our, our group, I went to a Glamour magazine. And I put Sharon's picture on the cover of Glamour and surprised her with that. So if your sister-in-law, your brother, anybody deserves any of these different magazine covers, you can, you can put them on them magazine cover, you, these same skills that you would be using can also be shared to social media. 
you can just post the picture in your social media as a greeting card for them. Um, you can email it. You can do whatever, whatever you want to uh, with those kinds of things. Okay. Now, this one is a, a word cloud. It's just one of many. And if you, I used to use Wordle, but I went to Wordle and don't go to Wordle because it was not a site you want to be at. I don't know what happened to, to that website. But this, this uh, word cloud, you've probably seen where you have a shape and, and it has words and in that and i can show you examples if we have time i didn't think that we would so i wanted to get just share some links and share some um possibilities for you here's a story for you here's another thing that you can share put on your list of things to share family quotations so um my cousin's grandson was at the house he saw a possum at the door and it was out in the country, saw a possum at the door. And he said, there's a possibility. So now we kind of joke around when we have possibilities, we have possibilities. And it just reminds us of, of little Jesse when he said, little Jesse, who is now 18 years old. And when he said possibility. So you, that's another thing that you can doc, document. This one isn't so much uh, what the same thing that I have been sharing, but this is another uh, good resource. And this is artifacts. And, and it, is, is a, it does have some free things and it has some paid things. I appreciate free things. And I understand that people, in order to, uh, supply good software to supply good resources for us. They deserve some some compensation as well. So I I don't mind that either. So right here, uh, it will tell you a lot of different things. It will give you inspiration, different things like that. And uh, if you sign up for their emails, then they'll they'll email you about it. So here you can choose an object. For example, we sold a home up north about a year and a half ago. And I had I had things um, from my mother's estate. I had things from our daughter's home who moved to Hawaii and left a lot of things back. And I had to really downsize. So it was much easier for me to take a picture and then add a story about it. And this one will house those stories for you uh, on, on their site. So that's, that's artifacts. There are quite a few different things that you can use in your, on your phones. And this is one article that tells you, it tells you seven. But there are so many more, and it some of them will send you prompts. Some of them will cost you a little bit of money, like one ninety nine to two ninety nine. Um, I use a program on my phone called Otter, and I'll see if I can find that um, Otter um, voice and. Um, and I'm not suggesting this is the only one or anything. It works well for me. It is cross-platform. And when I go to, um, I thought I tasted that. Um, when I go to interview someone else, I'll turn on the otter. It's like a, a voice recorder. I'll turn on otter, but it, it, um, transcribes it as they're saying it. So I not only have the voice recording, but I also have the speech to text and I can email that to myself. Some other reasons I use that, and it has like um, maybe 600 minutes a month. 
maybe 60 minutes a month free or something like that. It's either 60 or 600. And I know the decimal takes matters, but I just can't remember right now. <laughs> so um, you can check that out. So other ways I, I use that. I am hard of hearing. I wear hearing aids. And so sometimes when I can't hear people, I will turn on Otter. It can hear them and I read what they are saying. Sometimes when I'm in a meeting, I will turn on Otter and I'll record what's going on so that I have minutes of that meeting. And so those are just some, some of the ways that, that I use it. My dad and my mother loved play cards. And they, I mean, they just loved play cards. They uh, kept a score all month long to see who won. They played like five or six hours a day. When my mom had her dementia up until the last couple of years, she played card. She'd play cards with us and she'd say, what are we playing? What are we playing? And then she would win. Well, this was my dad. His name was Jim, J-I-M. We know a great Jim. But he would always say, you spell that, um, G-E-M. And so I had cards made for him. He was his biggest cheerleader. So here's, here's a recording that I did for him. He was. I a little white duck sitting on the water. A little white duck doing what he ordered. Took a bite of the lily pad. Shook his head and he said, I'm glad. I'm a little white duck. He would sing several different songs. Do you think that recording is priceless to me? Of course it is. And um, sometimes not documenting your, your things, but um, um, getting in their own voice is a wonderful thing. So just grab that handy little video recorder in your phone and record people and, and capture some things that you wish you had after they were gone. This is a memorial that I did for my mother um, for her funeral service. And I just wanted to, to share some things with you. It was done quickly, um, but mostly in, in PowerPoint. And I will share something about um, YouTube with you. And if you don't have um, a YouTube channel, maybe we could have a class on doing a YouTube channel because even if your videos are private, you can share them with your family or friends or anybody else you want to by sharing the link to them. Like this is, is a private video for me. But within a, a video, any video, yours or anyone else's, if you use the L, watch on my time right here. I'm at 926. If I do L, uh, I'm sorry. Um, now I do L, you see how jumps 10 seconds if I do L. If I do J, it jumps back 10 seconds. So if you miss something, you can just do J on your keyboard. It will jump back 10 seconds. You can catch it again. So here I tried to capture things that, that you know, was wonderful about my mom. And, um, and there's one particular touching one that I... I love. Okay, here's a prime example. They square dance. The picture on the right was an actual picture of friends of their square dancing. The picture on the left, I got from the internet, but it still tells the story. Okay. Um, my mom saved all these tips. Do you have boxes of things that somebody saved that you inherited? Well, then you can. Um, you can just take a picture of it and then tell a little bit about it and document it. You don't have to share every single tip, but uh, you can you can document it in in some way like that. Um, let me find find this other one that I want. This is where they lived in Sarasota, and you can recognize that down um, at the park downtown. And um, 
different things about my parents. Here's where they were playing games and and I documented with their scorecard, different things like that. And she was an artist. I captured some of those things. Um, some of she had notebooks full of notes about scriptures and sermons that she had heard. She was her parents were deaf. She had uh, five deaf aunts and uncles, and she would sign to help other people. But I just got that card off the internet. And this was when she was in a home for elders with dementia. And that was part of her life as well. Documented that. And I'm looking, oh, this is the one I wanted to share with you. I'm, I'm normally a very cheerful person and I don't really whine a lot. Well, mom was already in her dementia, but I went to their house one time and I, and I said, I, I really wanted to whine about something. So she said, I could, she said I could whine and I asked her to write me a note. So she wrote me this note. This gives Marsha Berkey the right to whine about anything she wants to whine about. <laughs> I just think that is so sweet. And I, I may show that to you someday if I want to whine about something. <laughs> but again, had I not documented this, I might have forgotten it. You know, even though I didn't want to, I might have forgotten about it. And so I guess what I'm trying to show you is that they don't have to be big things. The pictures don't have to be perfect. Your hair doesn't have to look great. We're not going for a photo shoot. We're going for memories. We're going for our stories, the stories of the people that we love. Um, <clears throat> uh, we lost a grandson who passed away. And he was 23 years old when he passed away. and. Um, I went out and captured all of his social media that I had rights to. I do believe that he had some, some personas that I didn't know about, but, but the ones I did. And one of them said that he was a serial killer. C-E-R-E-A-L. And I can attest to the fact that he could kill a box of cereal faster than anybody I knew. And I'm so glad that I documented that and that I can remember that because it's just, it's just something that I don't want to forget. Okay, let me see some more things. Well, in, within Word and, and Google Docs, some other things that I think that you should know when you're writing your stories are paragraph and line spacing. And indentation, maybe tabs, all of those things are going to be in the beginning word class that we have later this month. And so you might want to check on that. I did want to show you that within your Google Photos, and, and I, I'm not suggesting that this is the only place to do this. There are so many. You can go to Walgreens. You can go to CBS, Sam's. Um, Walmart, any place, and they'll all print photo books for you. But right within your Google Photos, you can get photo books, photo prints, canvas prints, you can get mugs, blankets, bags, all of those things. And they'll even suggest books for you. I just went to New Zealand and Australia over Christmas and, and New Year's. I take the best pictures, don't I? I really don't know how to take selfies. <laughs> they just never turn out for me. But one thing that I do recommend for these photo books is that that's exactly what they are, is their photos. And a photo is worth a thousand words. But whoever looks at the photo is going to come up with their thousand words. So if you want to do a photo book, I recommend doing your story and then taking a picture of, of it. For example, let's say this was my story right here. The, let's say the dog's picture was already in Google Docs. It's going to be in the book. 
but the story is not. I can use, and I'm sorry, I don't know the Mac, I don't know the Mac equivalent of this. So if somebody does, please, please put it in. But in Word, sorry, in Windows, it would be the snipping tool, or I really like um, Snagit. And you can um, just, I'm going to use snipping right now. Oops, we help if you spelled it right or it pops right up. And then when I click on new, it I can drag this and then I can save that this as a picture, as a JPEG, upload it to my Google Photos, and then put it right beside the picture of the dog in the photo book. That way you can tell your story as much as you want in your quote unquote photo book. A lot of the photo books will allow you to, to do um, a caption, one line, but they won't let you tell a whole, a whole uh, paragraph or anything like that. So I, I encourage you to capture in a story or something like that. So we're almost at eight o'clock and um, a couple other things I'll share before um, before I, I end is that if you're someplace else and you think of a good idea and you don't have a way to jot it down, you can text yourself, you can write a note on your phone, you can leave yourself a voicemail, you can get out your voice recorder, record your voice, um, you can do all kinds of things. You also... A friend of mine just passed away a couple of, maybe a month ago. She's a former Stug member. She planned her own funeral. Uh, that may be one of the stories you want to tell. That's your last chance to talk to that whole big group. So you may, you may want to do something like that. Um, now, there's lots and lots of things that I haven't touched upon. Within the next day and a half, I will send all those prompts that I told you about, I'm going to stop my share now so that I can just talk to you. I'll share those prompts um, with someone. <laughs> and will it be Hugh, you, Huey, uh, to, to put with the recording on the website, and, or perhaps Marshall, I'll find out. I'll share them. Yeah, pages. Marshall. Thank you. I'll share them with Marshall. And there's several pages of prompts that you can do. And what I recommend that you do with them is, let's say, let's say I have this printed out, I tore that nicely, print it out, fold it like this. Well, I would fold it so that you can see the typewritten questions like that. And then you can see the space between the lines of the prompts. Take your scissors, and cut them where that space is. However, if you fold it with the words in, then you don't see what the words are, and that might be better. You'll still be able to see the, the spacing. Then with them folded, just put them in a jar that your hand can reach in. And when you feel like writing, but you don't know what to write about, just reach in that little container, pull out one of those prompts, and write a paragraph about it or more, you may get hooked, you may want to write a lot more. And or if your family comes over to visit, or some friends come over to visit, put the little jar in front, in the middle of the table, have everybody take one of the prompts and get to know each other a little bit better. And uh, you can tell each other your stories. That's always fun. I think that's, uh, the end of my time. And uh, it's been a pleasure to share this with you. I, I love this topic. I love all of the little softwares that go with it, that make it more fun and more interesting and more creative. And any way that I can help you or that Stug can help you by providing classes, we're happy to do that. And so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Very, very 
entertaining and interesting. And uh, I got a lot of good ideas from it. Thank you so much. Ann, are you there? Hold on. You... Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Huey. Gosh, yes, Marsha, that was fantastic. But there was so much. I think we could have had four or five hours on this alone. Uh, I appreciate all you have said tonight and realize that there's an awful lot for us to learn. And there's just so much involved in what you did, do and what you've done. And uh, gosh, I'm impressed. Thank you for doing this tonight. This is wonderful of you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Do we have anybody that has any questions that we can ask Marsha up front? I'm looking at the chat box. Uh, uh, Vincenna says, thank you. Very educational. Joyce says, uh, thank you. What a joy to listen to your ideas. Carl says, Marsha, very inspiring, educational, and valuable. Uh, Wilma says, excellent. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, Kathy says, Marsha, so enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Tim Childers, uh, thanks for a lot of great ideas for my family tree project. Uh, Dee Binder uh, says, thank you, Marsha. Brought back memories for me. Uh, Bill used the, uh, uh, and it's something I didn't know how to do either, the, the background color is his comment. This was an excellent presentation and gave me so many ideas. Keith said, thank you, learned something. Huey, a lot of, Huey yes. you just reminded me of one more thing. It would take me two minutes to share. Would you mind? Go thank, ahead. Thank you. Um, share screen. And I need to get back to my, um, my this and that is a resource and it's I'm going to put that in the chat as well and is called it's through family search somebody said genealogy I meant to share this with you of course genealogy is your is your family story but and family search is, is free roots tech is coming up in just uh less than a month and you can sign up for that for free for virtual. It's $98 in person if you're in uh, Salt Lake City, but it's free virtually. But here's where I wanted to show you too. If you come down, keep coming down, it, it, they have hundreds of sessions. It's, it's wonderful. Um, but if you keep coming down, it has past keynote um, speakers and there is um oh right here most popular past sessions just to the right of that is explore and if you click on that it has all of their um their 2020 2021 2022 all of their other years and if you have particular things that you want to um search for you can put it in here it has guides that you can search on. So that's a great resource. And it's before our next meeting. So I, I did want to share that. Now I'm done. <laughs> oh, that's so fantastic, Marcia. That I'm glad you I'm glad you did that as a postscript because we certainly learned. Wow, I'm so impressed. I really am. There's a lot in here to learn, especially for people like me. But thank you so much again. And at this time, if no, does anybody have any questions for Marsha before we go? Once again, Marsha did an excellent job. This is Jean Cannon. Excellent job. It is really hard to get started sometimes and you sometimes. And you gave us a good tree to be able to figure out how to get at least a few ideas down to begin with. Your grandchildren will thank you if you start something like this because uh -huh. they don't always get a chance to talk to you individually later so this is an opportunity to leave something for them thank you oh you very very, well. very good point very good point gene thank what, you for what i did what what i did several years ago is i took all the pictures of family that i could scan that that we still my brother and i still had and scanned them all and then i i made a, a folder of family things a family uh my my parents uh, a whole folder with just nothing but my parents stuff things of my childhood, things of my other's uh, uh, cousins and, and grandparents and other pictures I had, put them all in different folders. 
And then I made a CD out of them. Of course, we don't do CDs anymore, but uh, you could do it on a thumb drive or something. And then I sent it to my brother, his two sons, and to other family members that I thought might like it. So they all had a copy of all the pictures. And uh, it would have been nice to know how to do it what some of the things you were talking about where I could have added some descriptions and maybe filled in some of those things that uh, I found a picture of my, uh, my grandmother my, on my mother's side and all her siblings. I have no idea who they are, what their names were or are, what there still are their names. Uh, and, uh, and none of, I, I sent it to a couple of cousins. Thank you either so we have no reference to who what the names were of my grandmother's siblings so if, if you wait too long sometimes you don't get that information you are so right Huey that is so true gosh wow well I tell you what I learned a lot tonight but I still need to know a lot more and Marsha's got two classes this month one is I think the seventh or eighth and the other is the 13th am I right Marsha I think so. I think so. <laughs> Something like that. At any rate, it's been it's gone out over the air, so you should be able to find it on, on your your uh, and on your computer sometime in the next little while. And Marcia's classes are always wonderful, and she's very good about answering all your questions. So I I would like you all to go. And I see a hand up in the air. First, I saw Marshall Dubois. Oh, uh, Bill was first. Well, I saw you first, that's, but that's okay. Right. I just wanted to share with the fact that my mother, in 1927, she was 13 years old, and they took a 171-day trip all the way from New Jersey down through Florida, came through Sarasota, um, and she did a handwritten um, daily Return of what? Well, you can't see it very well. I'm sorry. Like a diary? Two, 297 pages of a diary. Wow. Uh, it's not, it was not in this book. It's in a hardbound that I have in, in a vault. But, uh, and I thus became somewhat inspired as she has. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Bill, Thank you. you had a comment? Yes. Huey had an excellent point about, um, taking pictures of all of our pictures and he put them on CDs, which reminded me that our son worked with a space company for a while that they had all these backup tapes with all the stuff on them. Well, the tapes had aged and they gave him the project of getting the stuff off the tapes. Well, the tapes were not salvageable. So remember to upgrade your uh, photos or however you do them. If you've done them on a CD, now put them on a USB and try to make a regular habit of doing that so you don't lose them. Absolutely. There is a finite life to uh, CDs and DVD uh, and tape and, and any of the other ones we have used over the years. So yes, absolutely. I have all of them, not only on my computer, but backed up on other uh, backup sources as well, so I can always get to them. That is so true and so important to know. And USB is the best way to go now? USB and, and uh, things like uh, uh, Google Photos and uh, other online uh, cloud storage. But have it in multiple places and multiple uh, uh, types of uh, uh, media. Well, and, and, then up, and then update them as the technology changes. Right. Jean? And, yeah, I was going to say, Huey, one, one other thing that um, I was lucky enough to get my mother on recorded on a, you know, tape. Um, you know, and I say that uh, on the phone, uh, you know, just a recording of her when she was, um, you know, just about uh, going through hospice. But I had a chance to sit with her talk and have her talk a little bit about her mother and her sisters and, you know, the laughter that she had and all. But I was able to catch maybe about like 10, 15 minutes. That is a cherished item that all of my brothers and sisters have shared and used with their children to talk about her. So my point is not just pictures. If you can get 
just a snippet of the voice and maybe having them talk about, again, you know, how it was in their kitchen in the when they were cooking or something. It's really cool to be able to have that, to share her, her personality with them, so to speak. It's just a, a thought. Absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. And we have the wherewithal to do it these days. So we should all do it. That's so wonderful. Okay. Well, I think we have to just about bring this to an end if we don't have any more questions.